You've probably seen it before, a guitarist pushing on the body of his guitar, kind of looking like he's about to snap it in half. But what's that for? These body bends. Or just simply shaking the guitar. Is it actually just a simple way of imparting a bit of vibrato onto whatever you're playing? But it's actually a more dangerous and risky way of adding vibrato to your playing. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Depending on the guitar, one of the biggest points of failure is actually the connection between the neck and the body. And boy, do I have a story for you. But first, let's talk about vibrato. Vibrato is a technique that fluctuates the pitch of the instrument. It actually doesn't modulate the volume like some amp manufacturers would cause you to believe. <coughs> Fender. A lot of the times it's used in a classical context for the string section to be able to play more in tune with each other. Classical string sections don't have frets like a guitar does, so intonation becomes a really big deal. Because intonation as a whole can be tricky, especially when you're in a 40-piece orchestra, subtle vibrato can actually help you blend a little bit more and sound less out of tune. Vibrato also helps an orchestra sound as big as it does. Guitar vibrato can make things sound a little bit more unique, a little less sterile. It also helps to blend a little bit better as well. I'd say in most genres, mainly excluding straight ahead jazz, vibrato is a pretty welcome thing. It helps the guitar sound a little bit more in tune, seeing as guitar isn't always the most intonated instrument as well. Keep in mind that the reason that fanned fret guitars and basses exist, this is not a perfectly intonated instrument, and you will often have slightly out of tune frets. This is okay though, because we're pretty used to hearing the sound of a guitar. So why not just use a whammy bar? Well, not all whammy bars or vibrato systems are created the same. You think about the difference between a Bigsby vibrato system and a Floyd Rose. The Floyd Rose is capable of a lot wider range of vibrato and thus defines how it's used. And in addition to that, all vibrato systems sound a bit different. They all have different tolerances as to how they move the strings. In fact, Eddie Van Halen used a tremolo system known as a Steinberger Transtrem. Specifically, he used it on the song Get Up, as well as Summer Nights to a lesser degree. But this vibrato system's interesting because it actually bends all the strings equally. So engaging the system makes it kind of sound a little bit more like you're playing slide guitar rather than using something like a Fender tremolo. So the limit to a neck bend is much more suited to subtlety. This can inform the music too, as that subtlety is a lot more suited to intimate, stripped down recordings, or even solo guitar. So for a word of caution in terms of approaching a body bend, especially something pretty dramatic, uh, I personally have seen it go kind of crazy and result in a broken guitar. The year must have been like 2009 or so. I was in a guitar center. I hadn't been playing guitar very long, maybe a year at this point, but I definitely knew what a Gibson Les Paul Custom was. And I walk into this room. So there was this guy, he was plugged into maybe a Marshall or a Mesa Boogie. It was definitely a full stack though. Uh, and he had this Les Paul Custom that was a silver burst. It was probably the most beautiful guitar I had seen at the time. I loved how kind of futuristic it looked. And this dude had this apparently magnetic presence to a lot of people because there were a few people in this room listening to him talk about his playing. So this guy launches into Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne, as you do in a guitar center. And he was ripping. From what I can remember, he played pretty well. And I remember like kind of sitting there in awe, like, wow, this guy's playing pretty good. I think I remember he was about halfway through the guitar solo when there's a little bit of a bend and he decides to do a body bend and he pushes back on the back of this Gibson Les Paul custom, which angled headstock too, that was going to bend pretty far. At this point though, that guitar just collapsed into two pieces right in front of him. It was 
the most rock and roll thing I had ever seen to just destroy a guitar as you're in the middle of a guitar solo. I was pretty stunned. I was kind of in shock at the time. But this guitar completely and totally broke in half from this neck bend this guy did. He was kind of in shock. I'm sure he was a little worried he was going to have to pay the $3,000 that that guitar cost. Now keep in mind this was 2009 with Gibson's quality control. They found there were only a couple drops of glue in that connection point there between the neck and the guitar body. But that was pretty rock and roll to see. If there's one thing I can say about that, it's just proceed with caution really when you're doing this kind of thing. Uh, you don't really want to break your guitar, especially if it's a guitar that you don't own. Yeah, and to that degree, I would find it a little disrespectful if someone played my guitar and did a big neck bend on it. It's not worth the risk. Please don't do that to anyone's guitar. But hey, shaking the guitar when you play? Go nuts. That's a pretty nice effect. Anyway, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you go ahead and leave me a like. I'll see you guys in the next one.